We need a government-wide shift in how we do things. Tonight, 35 years after Indigenous rights are recognized in the Constitution, the Prime Minister says it's time to implement those rights. But also to share our hardships and all the systemic discrimination and racism that we endured in the process of his loss. Still in Ottawa, the Bushy family gets more support from two independent Liberal senators. We pray for that, we push for that, and it will be in the end of our leaders after. And the national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls continues in Moncton, New Brunswick. Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Members of Colton Bushy's family are winding down their high-profile week of meetings in Ottawa. They're calling for changes to a justice system they say has repeatedly failed them ever since the night Bushy was killed. Annette Francis has the story. On the final day of the Bushy family's visit, they began their morning with a press conference. We've been able to share the story of my brother Colton, of the individual, the loving individual that he was, and who he meant to us as a family but also to share our hardships and all the systemic discrimination and racism that we endured in the process of his loss. It's been a whirlwind since a verdict came down last week. Over the past three days, a family met with MPs, ministers, and the Prime Minister. And while they're optimistic, changes to the justice system will come. It's a conversation that needs to continue. There's a lot of racism in Saskatchewan, and we hope that our coming here opens dialogue to have meaningful discussions about that racism. A lot of Indigenous people are fearful that uh, this verdict supports vigilante justice, which it does not. They say the responsibility also lies with the provinces. It's going to be incumbent upon uh, the premiers of each of the provinces as well. Uh, we can't forget that this is happening in our home area. Of Within a year, they hope justice will be inclusive for Indigenous people. Whether that be as, you know, proper representation uh, for an accused or proper support and respect given to a family who's, a, who's of a victim, as in this case. Mm -hmm. So if that means changes to how juries are selected, that would be great. But we'd like to see overall changes to the systemic discrimination that Indigenous people face within the justice system from the time of the incident right through to a verdict. The family heads home this evening and promise to push for concrete changes. And at Francis APTN National News, Ottawa. We'll have much more on our top story coming up. But first, Prime Minister Trudeau made a bold promise in the House of Commons this afternoon. Before the next election, he will implement a new framework to recognize Indigenous rights that will guide all government interactions. Crown Indigenous Relations Minister Carolyn Bennett will lead a national engagement with Indigenous peoples with help from Justice Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould later this year. The opposition cautioned against more unachievable promises. As a starting point, it should include new legislation and policy that would make the recognition and implementation of rights the basis for all relations between Indigenous peoples and the federal government moving forward. This framework gives us the opportunity to build new mechanisms to recognize Indigenous governments and ensure rigorous, full and meaningful implementation of treaties and other agreements. With this framework, we have a chance to develop new tools to support the rebuilding of Indigenous communities, nations and governments, and advance self-determination, including the inherent right of self-government. This framework could establish new ways to resolve disputes so that collaboration becomes the new standard and conflict the exception. We will be looking to see if the talk around the table is going to lead to meaningful action on the ground that is going to make a difference in the quality of life of Indigenous peoples. Canada is one of the only countries in the world where Indigenous and treaty rights are entrenched in its constitution. 
That is a responsibility we should be taking very seriously, not one on which we should ever stake a simple election promise never to be achieved or revisited. The rising tide of anger uh, that we feel in this country at the moment will reach further heights if, we, if he doesn't deliver on his commitments of today. Because remember, we all know that there's another case coming down for ruling, Tina Fontaine. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid, I'm frightened by the prospect, uh, the outcome, if it's a negative out outcome for Indigenous peoples again. Following the speech, members of Minister Bennett's working group gathered in the foyer. Jody Wilson-Raybould, the Minister of Justice, says it's an exciting time. We are moving forward on a recognition and implementation of Indigenous rights framework in this country is absolutely historic and I look forward to working with my colleagues, to working with Indigenous peoples across the country uh, to operationalize this, translating the minimum standards that are articulated in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples into practical and meaningful benefits on the ground in Indigenous communities. Um, this is something that was started under the first Prime Minister Trudeau with Section 35 of our Constitution that speaks to Aboriginal and treaty rights. And what uh, our Prime Minister uh, is doing is ensuring that Section 35 is a full box of rights to be filled up by Indigenous peoples, Métis, First Nations and Inuit uh, across the country. It's truly a historic day and I'm incredibly honoured to be here. Thank you. Justice for Colton Bushy rallies continue across the country and Montreal is no exception. Hundreds of people from the Quebec metropolis joined the national outcry following last Friday's not guilty verdict in the Stanley trial. Danielle Rochette reports. It was a vigil to honor Carlton Bushy in the spirit of unity. Dakota, a Concordia University student from Saskatchewan, is here to support the family. I'm just here to show support for Colton's family, to let them know that they're not alone, that there's people that support them, that love them, and that, you know, they're not alone. We're with you. Clifton Nicholas from Ganesdagi asked non-Aboriginal people to do more for positive changes. I'm enraged, but I don't want that rage to translate into more violence. I wanted to translate it to change. We have to become the change. Here, now. La Cousette, a Cree woman from La Clarange, Saskatchewan, read a letter from Bushy's families expressing thanks for the support and their future plans. We will continue to speak out and call for justice in Colton's name. We will fight for an appeal and for answers to all of the racism that we experienced as a family. Mohawk activist Ellen Gabriel said the real problem is systemic racism. So this is really about humanity. This is about human rights. And this is about a family who will not have a grandchild from this boy, this son that they've had for 22 years, and this happened two years ago, and we're only finding out about now how many other families are, are wallowing in the darkness of Canada's justice system because of race, because of who they are. The main message from the people here was the need for immediate change in Canada and the way society views indigenous people. Daniel Rochette, EPTM National News, Montreal. In Yukon, the call for non-Indigenous allies to support Colton Bushy's family was heard and met Tuesday at a rally in Whitehorse. Shirley McLean has more. Because uh, I think collectively we all felt hurt, we felt angry, we felt the injustice. And it's a feeling that many of us have felt many times before. And 
Over 100 people came out at this rally in Whitehorse in support of Colton Bushy and his family's fight for justice. Angela Code is one of the organizers. She says the country would be a much better place if Canadians would take the time to educate themselves on the current issues facing Indigenous peoples. And that's what systemic oppression feels like. Because you could do all kinds of work for decolonization, for anti-oppression, for the revitalization of our languages, our cultures, but sometimes it's really hard. And so allies are very important in, in the support. Many Yukoners from all backgrounds came to stand in support underneath the healing totem pole in downtown Whitehorse. I wanted to encourage you guys to think about reading stories that are written by Indigenous authors or reading about you know, different aspects of, our, of uh, Canadian history or looking at... Maxine White calls herself an ally. She has started a book club so her and other non-Indigenous people can read about the current and historical issues of Indigenous people. One of the big pieces is sharing what I learned from them with my friends and family and colleagues who might not be listening. Yukon's AFN Regional Chief Kwani Adamnek says the road to reconciliation is tainted by the Stanley verdict. I think this becomes a question for Canada to really dig deep and say, what do we want our country to be? This can never happen and should never happen again, and so what are we going to do to support that? There are no easy answers. But for the people who showed up at this rally, their hugs are reassuring that the wounds left open by the Stanley verdict can possibly be reconciled. Shirley McLean, APTN National News, Whitehorse. The second degree murder trial for Raymond Cormier continued in a Winnipeg courtroom today. We'll get the latest after the break. Here's a look at Thursday's weather forecast starting on the East Coast. Cloudy and plus two in Charlottetown and St. John's. Minus 22 under the sun in Nain. Minus six in Cartwright. Snow and minus one in Saguenay. Plus five and cloudy in Montreal. Rain across southern Ontario. Plus seven in Sarnia, Toronto and Peterborough. Minus six in Thunder Bay on Thursday. Minus 12 in Sioux Lookout. Sunny in northern Manitoba, minus 22 in Island Lake and Thompson, minus 17 in Winnipeg with sunny skies, minus 15 in Dauphin. Sunny skies continue in parts of Saskatchewan, minus 13 in Regina, Swift Current and North Battleford, minus 23 in Stony Rapids, sunny and 22 below in Uranium City. Welcome back. The man accused of murdering 15-year-old Tina Fontaine was in court again today. Raymond Cormier sat in the prisoner's box as clips secretly recorded in his apartment were played for the jury. John Murray reports. Today is day 12 in the trial of Raymond Cormier, the man accused of killing Tina Fontaine. This morning, we heard testimony from two undercover officers. They were part of an investigation that was named Project Styx. The first officer befriended Cormier in one of 62 scenarios or interactions with Cormier. In addition to being his friend, he also offered Cormier some odd jobs paying him in cash. This afternoon we heard a recording of Cormier stating that there are three rules in crime. Deny, deny, deny. And in another recording, Cormier was by himself in his apartment being recorded by what police call probes, hidden microphones in his apartment. And in that recording, he was heard saying, get the murderer out of me? Hmm. That's effing it. Man, get away from me. And then he followed that with a few more expletives. We'll have more of this trial as it continues. John Murray, APTN National News, Winnipeg. The National Inquiry wrapped up two days of hearings in Moncton on Wednesday. Upward of 40 family members and survivors shared their stories, some of them still looking for answers. Justin Brake has a story. Because my mom matters. My mom is a human being. Barbara Bernard remembers her mother, Mary Frances Paul, who died when Bernard was 17. Bernard said her mother went out one evening and never returned. A few days later, police told her uncle that Paul's body was found by the waterfront in an oil drum with a broken neck. No one was charged in connection with Paul's death. 
Bernard spoke to a police officer a decade later. He said, you need to remember your mom for your happy memories. He said, you don't want to remember your mom stuffed in one of those drum cans. And that kind of like stuck with me. The inquiry doesn't have the power to compel authorities to reopen unsolved cases. The justice system should be changed and has to change. We pray for that, we push for that, and it will be in the end of our leaders after. Leona Simon remembered her aunt, Gladys Marie Simon. She went missing from a hospital in Campbellton, New Brunswick in 2004. Eight years later, some of her remains were found. Simon's family was told foul play was ruled out. They want the case reopened. Simon is advocating for on-reserve mental health facilities so people don't have to leave for medical care. Maybe it would be nice to have some, um, some institutions home so we can facilitate people that need that, that have mental health issues, so we don't have to worry about them. 38 people testified in Moncton, most in private. Audet announced today that the inquiry is on the cusp of submitting its request for a two-year extension to its mandate and that the inquiry will visit Happy Valley Goose Bay, Labrador during the first week of March. Next week, it's in Rankin Inlet. Justin Brake, APTN National News, Moncton. Thousands marched in the streets in Vancouver today in the annual March for Murdered and Missing Women and Girls. For many, it was a chance to remember loved ones. For others, it's an opportunity to support the demand for answers in many of the unsolved cases. APTN's Tina House has the story. It's a sea of people as close to 5,000 march the streets, carrying signs and singing the Women's Warriors song. According to organizers, it's one of the largest turnouts of people yet, as the demand for justice is getting louder. It's a way to gather up the allies and the supporters and all of the Indigenous people to remind the government that we're here, we're determined, and this has got to change. Maggie Gisley is holding a sign for her late friend, Don Cray. She was a victim of convicted serial killer, Robert Picton. She's been coming every year to offer her support. It's really emotional because not much has changed in the favour of women. Angeline Jack is marching for her cousin Jackie Murdoch, whose remains were also found at Robert Picton's farm. But back in the mid-1990s, Jack said she was a sex worker and a drug addict. Now clean and sober, she recounts how she could have easily been one of the victims herself. He had his brother and his and his uh, uncle with him, I think. They were in a black van. We were passing on Powell there, where the Starbucks coffee drive through is. The back window was open, the back door, I mean. They didn't lock it, but they pushed me in the back. They got in the front. The door was open, so I jumped out as the moving van was driving. So I'm proud to be here. It's a solemn walk as young and old gather to conduct ceremonies along these infamous streets on the downtown east side, where so many went missing or were murdered. This is the 27th annual Murder to Missing Women and Girls March here in Vancouver, and these protesters say that they'll continue to hit the streets and make their message known that they're demanding justice for the murder to missing women and girls in this country. Tina House, APTN National News, Vancouver. The topic today at the Quebec Inquiry into Indigenous Relations was the Montreal Police. Indigenous representatives accused the police of profiling excessive ticketing and failing in their own attempts to reach out to the community. Tom Fenario has more. I don't really want to know about your history. I just want to know what do I do when I see a drunk Indian. This is how Naguset, Cree director of the Native Women's Shelter in Montreal, describes police attitudes towards sensitivity training. Her colleague Vicky Boldo agrees. Every time we keep sitting down at a table, if we get invited, mm. Every time we sit down at a table, it's like we're being told what to do and how to do it, rather than with all the valuable information that we're bringing forward. This is in sharp contrast to almost three years ago when Montreal police signed an agreement with a grassroots group. Sensitivity training for officers was among the items agreed to. Wednesday, the Montreal Urban Aboriginal Strategic Network testified that training has gone poorly. So during the training, there are many officers um, laughing and not listening. Um, 
and they're, um, they were not pulled aside by their superiors. There was no um, consequence for them. Shortly after that session, police participants said that Cree Metsi woman Vicky Boldo was unqualified to train them. Boldo testified that previously she gave over 40 training sessions. I mean, I know Vicky and I, we go around Montreal, we go to schools, we go to universities, elementary, we do all, and we do Native 101. We teach people all the time. The network did take pains to mention that they do have a good relationship with some officers. But overall, they say the problems Indigenous people face in Montreal are systemic. There's no guarantee that I'm not going to get a ticket on the way out, you know what I'm saying? Like, we worry. We worry that there's going to be retribution or whatever you want to call it. Retaliation. Retaliation. When asked for a response, Montreal police said they will not comment while the inquiry is ongoing. It's expected to wrap up in September 2019. Tom Fenario, APTN National News, Montreal. Today on In Focus, we put the Gerald Stanley acquittal and calls for justice for Colton Bushy in focus. We've got highlights for you coming up after the break. Here's the rest of Thursday's weather forecast, picking back up in northern Alberta, minus 12 in high level in Fort McMurray, sunny skies and minus 11 in Red Deer and Medicine Hat. Another wet day on the west coast, plus 5 in Vancouver and Port Hardy, plus 3 in Prince Rupert with a rain-snow mix, minus 3 in Smithers. Sunny and rather mild across Yukon, minus 4 in Whitehorse, minus 5 in Beaver Creek, over to NWT, minus 25 in Yellowknife, 13 below in Norman Wells, minus 23 in Saks Harbor and Anubik, minus 21 in Politech, over to Nunavut and it's chilly, minus 39 in Chesterfield and Repulse Bay, minus 42 in Aglulik, minus 43 on Thursday in Joe Haven. Welcome back. The Gerald Stanley trial still has a lot of people talking, and we put that topic in focus today. We had asked the guests on what they would like to see happen next. Well, I think next we have to uh, deal with the jury system right away. That's, uh, that's a quick fix as, I, as far as I can see. Um, Mr. Stanley is going to be going back to court on gun charges. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. There's also the appeal. We don't know if they're going to go ahead on that or not. So there's a number of short-term things that can be done here. On the longer term, we've got to look at the justice system and what can be done to improve it. Our people are way overrepresented on the bad side of the justice system in jails and courts and so on. So that's going to have to change. I'd like to be able to walk to school. I want to walk down 20th Street in Saskatoon and not be afraid of going missing. I want us to have a grocery store in our community. I want us to have a, a, a farmer's place in our community. I want us to be out of jail, and I want us to be able to not worry about getting shot in the head going for a drive through our lands. It was a good conversation. If you missed the show, you can check it out online on our website, or you can catch a repeat tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time. Of course, you'll find much more at our website at aptnnews.ca. That is your newscast for this Wednesday. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for tuning in. See you back here tomorrow.